Hello there guys, this is Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky in Space. This is going to be a wrap up that's kind of split up throughout the month and it will include my TBR. And so today is May 4th and I've finished two books and DNF. I've actually DNF two books. It's been a busy four days. First, I finished The Red Palace by June Her, which is a young adult historical mystery set in Joseon, Korea in 1758. So we're following 18 year old Hyun, an illegitimate daughter who had very little opportunity, but she made the best of it and became a nurse for the palace. But along with the prestige for this job comes some danger. I could almost hear the main gates rumbling shut. It would be impossible to leave the palace now. Uneasiness settled in my bones and the warnings I'd been given echoed through my mind. To enter the palace means to walk a path stained in blood. Intense. So she's suddenly thrust into the middle of court politics when there's a massacre in the city and the crown prince is implicated. And actually her closest friend, the woman who raised her, like her mentor, is blamed for it and right in the middle of it. So she really wants it solved. But like, if the crown prince is the bad guy, that's gonna be hard to solve. So there's actually a couple mysteries wound into this and I, I loved it. I was instantly into it, hooked from the very start because in the beginning, Hyun is called from her bed to the crown prince's room and she goes up to his bed expecting it to be him. You know, there's a bunch of people in the room. Everybody's acting normal. And then she looks and there's an imposter in the prince's bed. And later the crown prince's mom the, says, mother says to her, you have to keep quiet about this. The crown prince was here all the time, right? He was just sick. You ha That's what you have to tell people. You're the nurse. They will believe you. And I was just like, Where's the crown prince? I was really gripped from the very beginning. Highly recommend. The characterization isn't anything particularly special, but the plotting and the pacing kept me very eager to read more, and, and I think the historical setting was done extremely well. I now want to read everything that Junher has written, and I'm planning on it. I already downloaded her debut. I need to also see like more Korean stories in print. Things said in Korea, in historical Korea, would be particularly amazing. Please recommend things. Please tell me about them. <laughs> okay, next we have The Sinner and the Saint by Kevin Birmingham. This is part history, part literary criticism about Dostoevsky's book, Crime and Punishment. It's about the writing of that. I really enjoyed some of the history stuff that was in this book, like about St. Petersburg. There were some amazing quotes about St. Petersburg that I shared on Instagram, and hopefully we'll also be able to share them in like a more long form video about this book. The details are just so evocative, and that was probably my favorite thing about this book. It was very engaging, very easy to listen to on audiobook. I really enjoyed that about it, but I did disagree with the main thesis of of this book, which is that Dostoevsky didn't write ideas into his fiction, that his only idea that was in these books is that ideas are too confusing, there's too many of them out there. And it was just like, no, I really think Dostoevsky had ideas, like especially if you look at the idiot. Crime and Punishment might be a little more confusing, but there's a few select scenes that I can think of where he's definitely conveying an idea. <laughs> you just have to like understand metaphor a little bit. <laughs> I had problems with it, but I also really enjoyed it. I think it's probably good if you're just looking for some biographical information about Dostoevsky. It's a pretty long book. I actually think it's probably too long for the purpose. It felt kind of unfocused to me, but it was, like I said, very engaging and interesting. Would recommend it for audiobook listeners who aren't going to check out a really chunky biography that you have to read physically. <laughs> a good novel is an excellent rebuttal to a vague theory. And next, I've been thinking long and hard about this, and I am deciding to DNF some things that I don't like that I was really trying to finish, but it's just not going to happen and that's okay. This is too long. There's too many characters. They're kind of annoying me. I'm sorry. I really wanted to like this, but I'm DNFing it. <laughs> War and Peace. And then the other thing I'm DNFing, which I'm sad about as well, is Dr. Zhivago by Boris Pasternak. I really wanted to like this because, you know, I have a read-along going about it right now. But even though I thought that the young people are gripping characters in the beginning, and I think that there's a lot of conflict inherent in the setting, and those things interested me. The writing style is really hard for me to read. It's very choppy to me. I think the translation is a little bit choppy, but also it hops around from character to character very quickly, and I can't remember who they all are. I have them all highlighted in blue, and like this whole book is highlighted in blue, like seriously. 
And I don't think I'm actually going to vibe with, that's just kind of a risk for me with modern fiction. I just don't agree with much of it. And I'm not enjoying it at all. I think I got close to 90 pages in, 89 pages or something. I really am sorry. I, I really wanted to finish it. That's it for now. I will update you again if I finish some more books before the end of the month. Hi there guys, it's May 26th. Hopefully you can hear me okay. So I'm just gonna finish off my May wrap up and tell you guys what I'm planning to read during June. So I finished two of my Talk To Me In Korean books. So my grammar book and the workbook that goes along with it and they were great. I'm not gonna order the second grammar book because they do have free lessons online and I just wanna try that out and see if I can make that work because they are pretty expensive books. But I'm already wishing that I had the book. Like it's just better. I like highlighting and all that stuff, but those are wonderful. And Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid is the next book that I finished and I read this with Kevin. Kevin and I actually listened to this on our way to the doctor's office. And this is a contemporary character drama about a family who was abandoned by their rich rock star father and the children just grow up growing very close together. And it kind of shows that their, their relationships being tested and stuff like that. And I thought the character dynamics were really good. I really loved the characterization um, and the kind of traumas that they endured and how that affected them. I thought that was portrayed really well. I thought Taylor Jenkins Reid was like a master of suspense and pacing. There's like a timeline backstory covering their parents' relationship, which comes into play at the end of the novel as well. And then there's the contemporary timeline. And then there's also an out outside box that's kind of narrating things and what i mean by that is you know from the beginning that there's going to be a fire and it's going to destroy the house that all that the kids are living in together they're now adults you know older adults their house is going to be destroyed by a fire after like the party of the century that's what you know so kevin and i were really drawn in by that promise you know and like it had a countdown you know during the party and yeah it was it was pretty good the next thing i dnf this is really like a month of dnfs for me honestly i dnf so many things like five things so i dnf the silence of the bones by june her which i talked about her third book earlier on these videos and i really loved her third book the red palace now this one uh, the silence of the bones is her debut and it is a good mystery like it's very intricate and the historical setting is very intricate and I really loved that. Um, but I am actually not a mystery reader or a historical fiction reader normally. I'm a character reader and her characters just weren't as good and the pacing was what really grabbed me in the first book. And this one just doesn't have the same intense pacing right off the bat. So to me, I just, I, it was gonna be like a three star book probably for me, just my genre tastes mostly. Um, and I was not in the mood for a three-star book. I was like, I need five-star books. It's, it's been such a bad month for DNFs and I just, I'm having trouble focusing on reading. So um, I just ended up DNFing it and I'll try her second book though. And I'm really looking forward to anything else that comes out because like I said, her most recent book blew me away. So this one is a YA historical mystery, just like the Red Palace in 1800 Joseon, Korea. And it's following a Tamo who is basically like a, an indentured servant for the police bureau. And there's a drama like this that the author said inspired her actually to write this story. And so we're following Sol who is 16, she's homesick and she's orphaned. But she's been sold to this police bureau and she really, it seems like a good place for her because she's very curious all the time and she wants to find the truth. And But really what she wants most of all is just to find out what happened to her brother who came to the city long before she did. And she wants to get back to her sister who is at home sick. And so that's really her goal. And she runs away um, in the backstory. And so she's been branded now and nobody trusts her. And there's been a murder and she ends up saving the life of the head inspector. And he kind of takes her onto the investigation. And so she begins to trust him. And he says that, she, that he will send her home to be with her family. And so it's really kind of about their relationship and about the mystery and yeah, that's, that's the main thing about it. And I, I think for the target audience of the book, young adults maybe who like mysteries or anybody who really likes mysteries or historical mysteries, especially in Korea, I think that this could actually hit the mark. It just didn't for me personally. So I DNF'd it at 49%. And the next thing that I DNF'd also I thought is great for the target audience, but not for me personally for my headspace right now. And that is the 
webtoon called Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint. This was recommended by Yoon. Actually, she didn't recommend it to me, but she named her channel after the main character of this webtoon, and that convinced me that I needed to check it out. And apparently it's also very, it was very popular in Korea as well. I've noticed several idols mentioning reading it. I've been wanting to try webtoon for a long time. Unfortunately, this one's just a little bit too graphic and violent and bloody for me to be visualizing it. It's a very cruel story, but like, there's Dokebi, which I think that's how you pronounce it. I apologize. I should have looked it up. But um, Korean Goblins, it's like sci-fi and it's got a very video game-like element to it. And I thought it was very engaging and I think I'll come back to it at some point in the future. Yeah, it's just fun to see what's popular in Korea and popular with young people because I am helping with the teen program this year at the library. So um, so this is about Dokja, who is the only person in his world who finished this super long and unpopular webtoon. Right after it ends, it suddenly his world becomes the world of the webtoon and so it's not a happy world <laughs> it's very like I said graphic and violent and but he has kind of a heads up about what's gonna happen because he's read the webtoon so what I meant when I said um, video game elements is that everybody can earn upgrades to your abilities and stuff like that. And so he has his ability upgraded by the fact that he has read the webtoon. And I, I think that a novel could not pull off this video game element um, the way this webtoon did. And I loved the art and I was just really impressed by it. So I would recommend it if you don't mind blood and gore. <laughs> and the next thing I DNF'd was Pachinko. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. These are books, things that I might really enjoy normally a lot of these. Um, so this is by Min Jin Lee. This is a Korean historical novel about when the Japanese had settled in Korea and colonized the area. And you're following a teenager, Sunja, and I really loved Sunja, but something happens in the, it's, it's like a family drama, like a generational story. And I think it's, I thought everything that I read was really well done and it was really easy to read. And I, it's not like I didn't like it because of the style. I thought the style was really wonderful. I thought the storytelling was wonderful. It's just something that happens in the plot very early on that told me this is not the right time for me to read this. Um, I just really hate that happening in books. And I just read another book that I also, I really enjoyed this other book, 1Q84, that had a similar element. And as far as men relating to young women, I just, I don't want to read anything like that right now. I need a break from that. I think at some point I might go back and read this, but it's just not, not the right time for me right now. And it just is annoying me. There's a particular man character in this book who's just driving me crazy. I don't even know really what the plot's about. And I know that if I had researched it ahead of time, I would have known about that plot element because it is in the description of the book um, on like Goodreads. So that's just my fault for not researching it ahead of time. Another thing that I DNF'd uh, Bonhoeffer's Letters and Papers from Prison. This was a buddy read that I was doing with Tiffany and um, Victoria. It was Victoria's idea and I'm sad to DNF it because it was her idea and I wanted to read it along with her. But unfortunately, I was I was hoping for something like Flannery O'Connor's letters and it's nothing like that. Flannery O'Connor just has such a sense of humor and I thought that the editor did an amazing job editing it and uh, there was no downtime that was boring in that. Um, but unfortunately, in this Bonhoeffer series, of letters and papers everything was pretty dull like he would just be listing out the things that he needs his family to bring him in prison for example um, and it just wasn't very exciting there were some really good gems in there and before I DNF'd it at 25%. Maybe it got better later, but I also don't think that his theology was going to be enlightening or useful for me um, and it just, like I said, wasn't that exciting. I didn't really, it, this isn't like a statement of his theology. He didn't get a chance to fully develop his new theological ideas um, while he was in prison between, it was like 1943 and 1945, he was imprisoned by Hitler's regime in Germany and um, because he had taken part in a plot to assassinate Hitler. He just didn't have time to fully develop his ideas and I was not interested in digging through all the boringness to find the gems, so to speak. But like I said, there were some really beautiful quotes, like he said, here in the quietness, I hope, which I love, um, because he's in prison, suffering, waiting, um, but he's just living in hope and, and living in faith, which I thought he did a really amazing job of having a good attitude in prison. So yeah, he was an amazing person. Um, I just think that he probably emptied the faith quite a bit of the most important things, like the literal death and resurrection of Jesus. So yeah, that's that's my general thoughts on that. Um, and something that I actually finished, woohoo, uh, The Secret Agent by Joseph Conrad. This I loved. 
loved this. Oh, my camera's gonna die, hang on. Hey guys, it's a little bit later. I had to, ooh, I'm very close. Hang on, there we go, that's a little better. Hope you don't mind the mess in here. So it's a little bit later. We went to the dentist and some other stuff, um, but I wanted to finish up The Secret Agent by Joseph Conrad, which I really loved this. I loved that it was short. I loved that it was heavy on the philosophy. I loved that it reminded me so much of Flannery O'Connor's writing style with the kind of mockery of characters, not, mean-spirited mockery just like this is what these people are really like <laughs> thought it was really well done and um basically this is turn of the century 19th not 1900 around there um in london we're following some supposed revolutionaries and an anarchist and one of the revolutionaries name is verlock and his family we follow them they they all have different goals but he is a secret agent and he sort of teams up with the anarchist with a plan and it goes horribly wrong and it's just terrible and I loved it. Like the plot is very good I think even though the plot doesn't come into play until quite a bit later in the book. Like the first half is probably pretty slow for a lot of readers. I was trying to read this at night so I can't really judge it very well in that sense because I struggled with the beginning but not because it wasn't interesting it was just heavy on the philosophy and I kept falling asleep over it. <laughs> but I really loved reading about it and kind of seeing Joseph Conrad's portrayal of anarchists and revolutionaries. Um, I don't think he came out with a very strong statement about anything. Like the police also got criticized. London itself got criticized. It was always very funny. And I, I think he just has an eye for human folly, a lot like Flannery O'Connor. So I really love that in an author. I'm coming to realize how much I love that in an author. And I know that Flannery really loved it too because she read like everything that <laughs> Joseph Conrad wrote. So I'm looking forward to reading more by him. I have like Lord Jim. On to my June TBR. I'm in the middle of a lot of things that I am not talking about yet in the wrap up section, but I'm hoping to finish them in June or just, you know, whenever. I'm not gonna ever rush myself. By the end of the month, I'm thinking I will probably finish All Creatures Great and Small for Kate Howe's Kindred Spirits Book Club. I'm loving that. I'm like 80% into that. Love it. I just love all of it so much. It's great for bedtime stories. So we'll talk about that more next month probably. And I'm also going to finish, it's something, it's an Agatha Christie mystery that Emma had her Discord reading and I'm loving that appointment with death, I think. I, I love that so much. I, I think it's a great story. This coming month, I'm hoping to read the new Dostoevsky short stories that just came out. Um, they're not new, but there's a new translation of them. Uh, Bad Business is the new translation of one of the stories, and that's the name of the... Yeah, I actually picked up a different translation of his short stories, and it's nice because this one doesn't have an audiobook, or I don't have access to the ebook, but I can get the ebook of another version so that I can have it read to me. And I'll be reading this with Stephanie from Miss Richards Reads. I also just started The Great Divorce by C.S. Lewis. This got voted on in my Instagram. And I would love to try my first Willa Cather this month. We'll see though, I don't know. I'm not, all of these are very much like up in the air mood reads. I would really love to read though, Death Comes for the Archbishop and Tiffany may read that with me, I'm not sure. <laughs> Tiffany and I have lots of buddy reads kind of planned out. I've also got A People's Tragedy still going. Yeah, I'm gonna keep pushing forward with that one. It's so long, it's just gonna take me probably a year to finish, but that's okay, I'm learning a lot. I'm really loving that. I'm gonna hopefully read A Hero Born by Jin Yang, which is a Chinese classic published in 1957. And this is for a translated book club that's here on YouTube. And I'm so sorry, I forget the name of the booktuber who's hosting this book club, but Charmaine traveling through books on Instagram is going to be co-hosting in June for this book and I, I want to read with her. So I'm going to hopefully read that. Um, oh, The Count of Monte Cristo, obviously that's the summer read along. So that's going to take several months as well. Some of these books are just like, either I'm either just reading them on audiobook or only reading them at night or taking a long time to finish them. Hang on it. My phone's just <laughs> going off. I'm going to go grab that. Hopefully also reading, the Girl with Seven Names with Penny from Cat Lady Book Nook. What else? Shadow and Claw by Jean Wolf. That's a buddy read that, uh, a read along that I'm actually doing. Let me drop my phone. I'm going to a Zoom with Kate Howe in a few minutes. So I was reminding myself with my phone apparently. Ella Enchanted is the Kindred Spirits Book Club book. 
Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto. So that's gonna be one of my top priority reads. I'm buddy reading that with Una. Like I said, this a lot of this is kind of mood reading on my own, so it can be pushed back, but that one I really want to make sure that I'm reading. Oh, and Lessons from the Edge I'm listening to right now. I'm loving that. I'm like really deep into that. I'm like 40% in and I, all I wanna do is listen to it. <laughs> she was a US ambassador to Ukraine and some other areas and she's just so interesting. I really respect her. So yeah, and then A Canadian Heroine by Mrs. Harry Coghill is Kate Howe's Victorian book club book. So lots of options. Who knows what I will pick up? We'll see. I Like I said, I DNF five books this month, so I might just drop things here and there. We'll see. Oh, and uh, Tiffany's book bingo is also happening. So that's cool because that's like fine for a mood reader. You can just pick what you want to read <laughs> and apply it to the bingo, which I love. Ancient Sathon is also happening this month. But I was looking for some Chinese classics and I probably by the end of the month will have looked and tried to find one. The good thing about creating TBRs is you can really identify things that you want to read, even if it's not like something you read right away, like for that month. If you planned it and you researched it, it's like, it's on your radar then. I probably won't read any ancient classics next month, which I'm sad about because I love the co-host, but I just don't think that I'm gonna be in the mood for that. So anyways, those are my plans. I'm gonna go hang out with Kate Howe and everybody else who's coming. I'll talk to you guys soon. Oh, let me know what you're reading next month and what you read this month. Yeah.